Hello and welcome to Basic Medical Sciences. In this video, we are going to talk about the hepatitis C virus. Hepatitis C virus belong to the Flaviviridae family, uh, particularly in the hepasivirus genus. It is a positive sense single-stranded RNA virus. It has an envelope and it has an icosahedral capsid or symmetry. Like most of the RNA viruses, it replicates inside the cytoplasm of the host cell, in this case, in the hepatocytes. Right, so all these features are common for the Flaviviridae family, right? So let me tell you something specific about the hepatitis C virus. In hepatitis C virus, the virion encoded RNA polymerase lacks proofreading exonuclease activity, uh, particularly from 3' prime to 5'. Prime. This induces mutations into genes encoding viral glycoprotein envelope and later on allow for continuous novel or new antigen production. And also, rapid replication rate produces many antigenically unique viral envelopes. This leads to delayed production of antibodies relative to the production of new mutant variants. Right. So because of this variation also, uh, we don't have the vaccines for the hepatitis C virus. Right. Uh, and one more thing. They are about six genotypes, right? Uh, type 1, particularly in the United States, it causes about 85% uh, of the cases. And genotype 2 causes about around 10 to 15%. Right. So it is possible to be reinfected with the other HCV genome, right, after the previous infection. Now let's talk about transmission of the hepatitis C virus. Right. Firstly, uh, this hepatitis C virus is transmitted via parenteral route, right? And here we mean needle sharing, uh, particularly among uh, IV drug users, and also needle stick injury, for example, in healthcare workers. So to remember this hematogenous way, let me bring uh, this blood container. Another way is through organ transplantation, dialysis, and blood transfusion. Right. The second route is sexual, uh, which is more rare in contrast to HBV and HIV. And lastly, perinatal or vertical transmission is possible. So who is at risk of HCV infection? On number one, we have IV drug users, especially long-time users. So about 90% of IV drug users, they are HCV positive. And also, hepatitis B, that's HBV or HIV positive individuals are also at high risk, not forgetting the prisoners, and also recipients of blood transfusion or organ transplants before 1992. Now let's talk about the clinical features of hepatitis C virus. The incubation period is two weeks to six months. Okay, so uh, we have two types of infections. We have acute infection or acute cause and chronic cause, right? So acute cause, this is uh, when the infection resolves within six months. And chronic cause, this is like when infection persists for more than six months. Starting with acute cause first, about 80% of cases are asymptomatic. That's why most of the cases result in chronic cause, right? But if the symptoms are present, they are usually nonspecific, meaning to say you can find these symptoms in other acute viral hepatitis infections, right? And the symptoms include malaise, fever, myalgia, arthralgia, and also right upper quadrant pain, tender hepatomegaly, and also nausea, vomiting, and diarrhea. 
not forgetting jaundice and uh, possibly pruritus, right? So this pruritus is usually because of high levels of bilirubin, right? Moving on to chronic cause, right? So the findings are most often mild and non-specific. For example, fatigue. Liver cirrhosis usually occur in 30% of the cases within 20 years of infection. Uh, so, this HCV or hepatitis C virus has the ability to induce or to trigger the, the immune reactions. So, this will lead to some extra hepatic features, for example, hematological, rheumatological, and dermatological, right? Okay, starting with the hematological first, uh, these include mixed cryoglobulinemia, monoclonal gammopathies, and lymphomas, right? So if you don't understand these terms, just click uh, the, the description box. You'll find a uh, detailed explanation. We don't have time. Okay. Uh, rheumatological features uh, include membranoproliferative glomerulonephritis and uh, polyarteritis nodosa, or PAN. Dermatological features include porphyria cutanea tarda and lichen planus, and you also find the description of these conditions in the description box. Now let's talk about diagnosis of hepatitis C virus. Okay, so at first we need to do ELISA test, that's enzyme-linked immunosorbent assay. And this is specifically to detect anti-HCV antibodies. This result is positive in case of acute, chronic, or previous HCV infection. Right. So if you find that the result is positive, we need to do the next test called a polymerase chain reaction or PCR. Right, and this one is to detect the HCV RNA. Right, so if the result is positive, it means there is active HCV infection, which may be acute or chronic. Right, so here I just want to remind you acute can resolve like within six months, and chronic over six months. If the result is negative, it means there is no infection, but there is a prior infection. So this might be because the viral titers are still low. They are undetectable. All right. So the other use of PCR is uh, we can determine the, the HCV genotype, right, and the virus titer. And uh, this will assist in treatment planning and monitoring. The other test we can do is liver biopsy, and this is invasive, right? Uh, so it has a lot of disadvantages. So it is mainly used for evaluation of a response to therapy and or evaluating fibrosis in patients with chronic hepatitis C infection, right? Uh, and the last test is ultrasound. Ultrasound, we can do it to detect cirrhosis. And neoplasia, for example, uh, hepatocellular carcinoma, right? So this is a complication of um, hepatitis C virus and other uh, hepatitis C viruses. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, please make sure you subscribe so that you won't miss any of our latest videos. Hit the thumbs up button and leave a comment on the comment section. Until next time. Head bowed.